We, have, we are seeing tremendous changes uh, in cities around the world. So if you looked at the cities that were the largest cities in 1950 and compared them with the ones uh, that exist today, you'll find that very few of them are still on the list. So we've had just a dramatic change in how cities look like from 1950 to today. And I expect the changes will be much more dramatic in the next few years. So what's causing these changes? On the one hand, you know, tremendous urbanization, higher densities in cities but simultaneously a changing landscape of technology. Uh, so are automakers now automakers or are they mobility providers? Are tech companies, um, are they just tech companies or are they also in the automobile business? So you're seeing just a tremendous convergence and where technology will take us at the end is still an open question in my mind. However, we have a duty now to be very attentive to how we can use that technology to improve the well-being and livelihood of citizens because this is what they are expecting uh, from, from their mayors, from their city officials, and from themselves as well. So I think it all starts with building consensus around what are the priorities for us. So we've been very much uh, in touch with the resiliency agenda. What are the things that are affecting how cities react to shocks, to pressures? Starting from that point of view, and whether those shocks are man-made, whether they are natural hazards such as climate change, whether they are just you know, simple matters that affect everyday lives, such as congestion, for instance. So starting from that resiliency agenda, understanding what are the key priorities that need to be addressed, and then formulating a plan around how we can get to a better outcome for citizens is, I think, where we need to start. And that cannot be done unless you already are starting with public support, with citizen involvement, with stakeholder acceptance, and it has to be a very inclusive agenda that brings all the elements of what makes up a city, you know, both the government, as well as the citizens, as well as the private sector, as well as the entrepreneurs, and get all of that consensus built up so that we can affect the changes that we are seeking. So we've been very fortunate in that we work with a number of cities around the world. We've, we've met with a number of mayors. So we've been very much in tune with the agendas uh, that cities are struggling with. Uh, I'm always encouraged when I see some cities taking those bold steps, for instance, to move forward. So for instance, Copenhagen trying to get to a carbon neutral uh, city. Uh, you know, the work that happened in Rio ahead of the Olympics. Uh, it takes a lot of visionary thinking, a lot of mayors who are willing to lead from the front uh, trying to jump ahead, trying to take advantage of the technologies that are available. Uh, I think bold thinking is what's required. Now, don't forget, we are still at the beginning of, of what I consider to be a long journey. I think the challenges that uh, we are now living, you know, the urbanization demographic challenges, have been building up slowly. But I think this technology uh, explosion that we're seeing right now with the innovations, this is all new. And so I think bold thinking about where the future will take us, uh, the willingness to experiment, to try out new solutions, I think is what's, what's required. We've been very fortunate in that we've seen a lot of examples around the world. I'm personally very encouraged. I'm very excited by what I see. And I think the future actually looks positive if we are willing to take those bold steps and, and lead. We are, you know, as a company and as well as myself personally, we're always excited when we have events like Urban Future, where you get many stakeholders in one place at the same time. And by many stakeholders, I, I mean governments, I mean various cities, uh, technology providers, private sector participants, consultancy firms like ourselves. Um, because we are at the start of a fantastic dialogue that's going to affect how cities will look in, into the future. And without bringing people together to have those frank, honest discussions, to share experiences, it's going to be very difficult to get to the right outcome. So, and this is why we're excited to be here. I actually catch up with a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, and it's always a great opportunity for me to share notes. Uh, ask about what they've been doing the last few years, talk about our common uh, objectives and projects for the coming period. Uh, so it, it's this exchange of ideas that we're always looking forward to. Two topics mainly, uh, I think the, the whole issue of how do you finance smart cities initiatives is going to be absolutely essential. And we've been doing a lot of work around the financing part. Um, I think with all the, you know, the best goodwill in the world, if the financing mechanisms are not in place, it's going to be very hard to implement some of those solutions. The second thing that, that we're excited about is getting stakeholders to actually meet and agree on the way forward. So one of the biggest challenges that we see with cities is how do you get that consensus around specific initiatives? 
without getting government, the private sector, companies all at the table, at the table, same table at the same time to agree on the way forward. So getting more stakeholder involvement into those workshops to agree on how best to bring the city together towards those common goals is, is absolutely essential. Putting in a mechanism for regular stakeholder consultation is I think also absolutely essential.